we're going to end with this case. And this is a case at Arizona State University where the first three tests we ran were food services, sports marketing, and IT networking. Remembering that I'm a civil engineering student who got an industrial engineering master's and doctorate, but we tested this out in the construction industry. We're at Arizona State University, and the senior business management fellow came in, and his procurement director came in, and after watching us for 10 years, articulated to us that we had done something that they haven't been able to do. And that is to write a contract with an expert and have everything logical, transparent, and explainable. And they hadn't done that at the university. And they said, we want to try this out. And they tried it out in food services, knowing that we had no knowledge of food services at all. We wrote the request for proposal with them. We ran the selection process as we dictated here and helped the successful bidder to write his own contract, knowing that we knew nothing about food services. They received $32 million by signing that contract with a higher performer. They then came back right away. We wrote a sports marketing contract, but we ended up with the IT networking contract. And the IT networking boss explained to us, this is why I want to try you out. Because for two years, I wanted my own people to give me a plan that would take us from the, quote, old age antiquated systems to new age. Because we're a cutting edge research level one university. We cannot survive with what we have. He said, for two years, all my people have been telling me is, we don't have enough information. We don't have the information. Nobody has it. We're being controlled. We have to do what our clients tell us to do. It's all the professors at the university. Everybody wants to tell us something different. We can't handle this and do what you want done at the same time. He finally came to us. He said, are you positive that I don't have to know what I have currently to go on the street? Absolutely. Are you positive? That by the time we end up here, we're going to have an expert vendor who measures everything, who has a plan to transition our old antiquated system into a cutting edge system. Yes. What if it doesn't happen? We're not going to hire them. You don't have to do a lot of work, so you're not going to lose anything. Thought about it. He said, let's do this. We went out on the street. Only one bidder came in. Everybody else is really worried. We only have one bidder. This isn't going to be competitive. No. You know what it costs the university. Let's see what this expert vendor says. Oh, well, that's non-competitive. No, only in your mind. We're running this test. We're going to move on. We got one bidder. We're bringing them in. They were outstanding in what they proposed. University said... We're going to go with them. The visionary was happy. Then the visionary left. And then we came in with like three blind mice taking over. Who wanted total what over everything? Control. Who wanted to make decisions? Who wanted to put their chest out and tell everybody that they are responsible for everything? And this vendor is not an expert. This vendor is cheating them. This vendor is trying to charge them too much. This vendor doesn't know how to do IT networking business. They got to where it became so vicious. I'd hear it at my office, and I'm not even in the loop of, in the chain of command or in the communication system. I start hearing this. Finally, they come and talk to me. I said, set a meeting up. And the ASU people were vicious in their attacks. And I said, you're so far apart, I realize that putting you two together in a meaningful discussion is not going to go anywhere, so let's discontinue the contract. Let's go out on the street again, and let's see who can deliver this service at a better value that you're expecting. I said, but before we do this, why don't we call the vendor in one last time, and let's review their dominant metrics. They said, that's a good idea. So now we're going to look at the metrics. 
It's before we had this contract, the university was spending $12.3 million. The vendor said, we can come in and we can maintain your antiquated system for $10.8 million, but we're actually going to go through our supply chain, and just by going through our supply chain, we're going to take out $0.43 million. So we're going to do it for $10.38 million, so almost $2 million cheaper than you can do it. When we got into this argumentative period, we looked at their bottom line and the university was actually paying them 9.83 million. So the university quickly could see, oh my goodness, they're doing it cheaper. So then we said, well, let's look at the level of service. Next. Well, major outages is what the university can't afford to have. They need a very high uptime. So major outages, the university never identified how many and who caused it simply because it was not to their best interest. They were causing all the outages. So when the vendor came in the first year, they just identified who caused the outage and how many? 37 outages. At this time, they were having 11 outages a year. But the outages were very small. But they were still caused by the university. But the uptime went from 99.8 to 99.998. The university was impressed. Customer satisfaction went up. Next. Support on all our equipment went up. All the wired connections had increased capability. And they really made the whole campus wireless. But the IT spending ratio is what caught everybody's eye. The university was only spending 6% every year in getting new equipment. They weren't transforming the system. When the vendor came in, they spent 26% the first year. And at the time we were having the disagreement, they were spending 56% on new equipment. When the university saw these numbers, they quickly realized what? If they fired this vendor, their risk would go what? Why? Because the vendor kept the metrics, and what the vendor wanted to do is show everybody else on the university campus the metrics. This group quickly realized this was not a good thing. So their decision was to not fire this vendor, but to just to renew their contract with one small change. They wanted written into the contract that the IT networking group at Arizona State University would make all decisions and would manage, direct, and control the vendor. They were still what? But the vendor was no longer blind. And the vendor realized, is it possible for one group to control the other group? No. So they realized, even though it was written in the contract, that they would be making decisions and control the vendor, it's not possible to control. So they realized that all they had to do is keep up their system of metrics, act in the best interest of the client, and besides having to listen to people saying that they were in control, which was a nuisance, business would go on like usual and it would be high performance. This vendor actually understood best value, understood transparency, understood metrics, and realized that even if you're the client, you can't change this. It's an amazing revelation that anybody in the supply chain can do this and help everybody else in the supply chain. This is the best value effort. This philosophy works in the supply chain. It works in an organization. It works anywhere in life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more content. If you have any questions about the best value approach or for Dr. Dean, leave them in the comment section below and we'll get to them in a later video. Thanks. We'll see you next time.